You might not think that a friendly match could anger a manager, but when Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United lost to Cadiz in a mid-World Cup game at the end of 2022, he was noticeably annoyed. In the post-match press conference, he didn't hold back. Cadiz were a threat in transition, he said. For the second goal, we were not awake. We had a bad rest defence, especially in the midfield, it's unacceptable. Now, the phrase rest defence is creeping into the English football vernacular. More and more, managers are mentioning it in the course of their media duties. Ten Hag is probably the most high-profile user of the term in the Premier League, but the big question is, what does it mean? What is rest defence? If you break football down into its constituent parts, it can be reduced to two basic phases of play, in possession and out of possession. Usually, when a team are in possession of the ball, they'll be looking to move the ball towards the opponent's goal in a bid to score. You could call this the attacking phase. When a team are out of possession, they will generally be looking to stop the opponent from moving the ball closer to their goal so as to make it harder for them to score. And you could call this the defensive phase. There are, of course, outlier situations in both phases, but between these two phases of play, you have the most basic moments in football. But these two phases are opposite sides of the same coin. If a team is not in possession, then they are out of possession by definition. If they lose the ball when they're attacking, they're now defending. And it's this phenomenon of teams shifting between in possession and out of possession phases of play that offers the context to understand rest defense. Because for any team that's in an attacking phase, there's always the possibility that they lose the ball and enter the defensive phase. And the question that rest defense seeks to answer is, how well prepared are you in the attacking phase to deal with that shift to defending? But the phrase rest defense is actually a translation of the German phrase rest vertidigen. This is a portmanteau word that is built from two separate words. The word vertidigen means defense and the word rest translates directly into English. But there's an etymological problem here. Where a native English speaker hears the word rest, they will most likely associate it with the verbal form of the word that is relaxing or putting less effort in. In German though, its usage is nounal. It refers to the idea of what is left over, the remainder. So in an attacking phase, a team will commit a number of players forward to try to score a goal. The rest of rest defense literally refers to the players that are left over, the non-attacking players during that attacking phase. Rest defense refers to the defensive attitude of these non-attacking players and asks how are these players set up in order to best deal with a turnover of the ball. This is rest defense in its simplest form. So when Eric Ten Hag complains about his team's rest defence, what he's referring to is the positioning of his players within the attacking phase that's led to the opposition being able to cause Manchester United problems in those moments when the ball was turned over and a counter-attack was sprung. If United's rest defence had been better, Ten Hag was suggesting, then these transitional moments would have been less dangerous. So why are we hearing more and more elite managers referencing rest defence in the present day? Well, the answer is fairly simple. We've already established that rest defence refers to a team's defensive structure in the attacking phase. But the best way of being an attacking threat is to push more players forward. If you do this though, you're moving players further away from your goal and weakening your defensive structure if the ball is turned over. You can only commit to pushing more players forwards then if you're confident that the players who are left over, the rest defence, are up to the task of covering the opposition in the event of a counter-attack. For elite managers like Pep Guardiola, Julian Nagelsmann or, of course, Eric Ten Hag, a team's attacking threat stands or falls on the ability of their rest defence to offer their attacking unit protection. These managers need to maximise their scoring potential and so in order to achieve this, they need to make sure their rest defence is perfect. So to reverse the old adage and co-opt it slightly, you could say that rest defence is the best form of attack. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.